For 1933, in The older generation hoped their young women would stay within the close circle. But our generation encouraged our girls to step out. We let them go and they went up, up! It was my mother who pushed me to leave home. Your father will never let you leave, but I will, she said. She wanted me to have a life that she could not imagine. And I was not an adventurous girl, you know, but go, she said. She practically had to push me out of the house onto the boat. So I arrived in Hertfordshire to stay with my auntie one cold autumn day. And, you know, it was such a shock. Everything was icy. The pavement, the trees, the people. But they warmed up gradually. I cried myself to sleep for a long time. And now I don't like to remember, but she was right, you know, she was right. And when I think of her, even now it warms me up. I only brought one thing with me from home, apart from a few clothes that my mother had made. A cushion she had sewed together from beautiful scraps of fabric, jewel colours, a flash of ruby, a shimmer of silver, turquoise like the sea back home. I still had the cushion, of course, on my favourite chair. My advice is ignore the instructions you've been given. They'll not always be correct. Choose your own way. Born in train. Schooled in Tring, married in Tring. He was a Welshman, my father. That's why I sing so beautiful. You can do anything. Anything. You can do anything. I always remember being happy with Mum and Dad. We did everything together. Seven when the war broke out, fourteen at the end, went straight to work, then Jack. He made all the decisions. He was home at a certain time, dinner on the table. I was always there. Now, I'm alone. I am alone. Always alone. Up here in the burning blue. I was 11 when war broke out. My parents worried whether they should send their children away or not. About a week before it all happened, they decided to send us and we did not want to go. When the day of our evacuation arrived, we travelled from Paddington Station to Maidenhead with labels around our necks, haversacks on our backs, gas masks and a carrier bag with tins of Nestle's milk, corned beef and... Um, I think some sandwiches. It's funny, after breakfast, I don't remember eating anything else that day. The people we went to would go out to socialise and uh, the house was locked up. So we would have to wander around until our guardians came home at 9.30 p.m. It got dark at 4pm and wet and snowing, we were freezing cold and hungry. The lady at the house had some funny habits in the kitchen. I think she used to save washing up water from one day to the next, it never looked very clean. The son at the house was always tormenting us to the point that he made our lives a misery. The war 
school forced us to grow up very quickly. 12 when it started, just 18 when it finished. How we coped with it all, I just don't know. We just did. Women are slow to rouse, but nothing on earth will stop them. I was born in 1935 in the ancient geographical area of the Corum Hundred. I consider I've had a fulfilling time living my entire life in the rural Tring area. It's given me such a sense of belonging, especially now during the lockdown. My auntie is my heroine. She changed the world. She did so much for no pay, worked her way up. Nurse, matron, MBE. She was afraid of nothing. Nothing would stop her. Nothing would stop me. Nothing on earth. My mum is my heroine. Born 1933 in India, came to England 1966 due to the UK labour shortage. One of seven born in poverty, worked in a factory, knew her own mind. She was outspoken. My sister was the first in our family to go to university. But for her, I would have never traveled. She changed my world. My mother is my heroine, always will be. Widowed at 39, worked in a munitions factory, raised two children. In 1941, the house was bombed and dad was killed. Me and mother were buried alive for three days. So she is the one. She is the one. You don't have to go round the world, be famous, but making a difference, however small that is. Amazing Amy, my mother-in-law, born in Liverpool in 1924. From a young age, she worked in a bakery and her whole life produced wonderful cakes. The family queen of delicious, wholesome home baking. <laughs> I was born and grew up in Zimbabwe and was engaged to Amy's son, who came to work as a teacher in the newly independent country. When Amy received her invitation to our wedding, she immediately said, I'll make your wedding cake for you. How would this work? I wondered. No problem, I was told. She made the long journey to our wedding, her first ever long flight, with three wedding cake tears in her suitcase, baked in England to be eaten in Africa. We placed it carefully on a table outside as the reception would be in the garden of my parents' home. Nothing could go wrong, we all felt. The weather in Africa is of course very different from England and as the afternoon wore on someone noticed that the gorgeous cake was beginning to subside a little in the heat. Quick we've got to cut the cake now! We held the knife together, newlyweds, and made a wish as tradition says. I've learned so much from my warm-hearted mum-in-law. <laughs> I like breaking the ice, travelling out. When I saw the Queen, when the royal car came along, there was so much excitement. But to this day, my memory still retains astounding images of her skin. I've never seen a woman with such beautiful skin. Her photographs did not do her justice. Jokingly, I ask, do I get a knighthood for saying that? I was eight years old at the time. Remember, none of us went to university. Not in our day. I couldn't have taught, become a teacher. It would be like flying to the moon. <laughs> Flying to the moon was all I ever wanted to do. To go up there. My sisters are my heroines. When we were growing up, my older sister, she had to look after all of us. 
and there was seven of us. <laughs> so she became like the little mother to us all. And we were quite the handful, all girls. <laughs> but she had to do it, no choice. I mean, she wanted to travel the world, join the army. She wanted to do a lot of things that she just never had. But you know what, she was my champion my soldier i mean we used to spend hours just going through my vocabulary the more words you know the stronger your voice would be she would say that to me all the time <laughs> and sometimes i would just look at her face and wonder what is it that she really dreamt of for herself so when i had to leave home to go to college i did it for her i wanted to make her proud and my sister, she's so fierce, she said to me, you should be proud of yourself. <laughs> but you know what? We did it together. Can I go out to play, ma'am? I put my play clothes on. Coming home from school, the first thing was to change shoes and dress. I want you to run an errand first, she said. Then you can play. Pop down to Bales's for me and get a quarter of tea on the book and ask him if he has anything UTC. UTC. It was years before I realised that meant under the counter. Wartime shortages were still apparent and plenty of goods were still on ration. Today was Friday. No school tomorrow. And Journey Into Space was on the radio tonight. Life was good. The walk to Gadebridge Park was along the Marlows, where we gazed into the bike shop and dreamed about one day owning one. We giggled at the display in the ladies' corset and underwear shop. <laughs> Then into Watkins the Baker's for a bread roll before entering the park. We sat by the big white bridge and devoured our food. We'd scoop the soft white bread out the middle and save the crusty bit for later. We paddled in the gade and looked for bugs and stuff under pebbles. We sat with our feet in the water and dreamed of what we would be when we were grown up. All I ever wanted to do was fly. Once I'd flown a spitfire, I never wanted to come down again. Up there, the burning blue. Girl power, ambition, drive. You can do it. You can do anything. Now I'm on my own. I feel I've got it in me. To make up my own mind. To make decisions. When I was young, my slippers were red. I could kick my heels right over my head. Now I am old, my slippers are blue. But I know I could still dance the whole night through. My mother said to me, you can do anything if you want to. You can do anything. I couldn't, but you can. Remember that. Hold up your head. I had three brothers and their education was more important than mine. But eventually I managed to join the police force and I enjoyed every minute of it. I had to leave early because I got a spinal injury and I had to learn to walk again. Then my marriage ended and I had to start again. Then I got cancer again. I had to work to fight this thing inside me, but won. I won. Nothing on earth will stop us once we are aroused. Hold up your head.
They woke mum and dad in the night, the Spanish ladies. They're after you. There are two boats at midnight. We had to leave the safety of the rock. Go quick! The Spanish ladies insisted. We packed bags fast. Mum and dad took one boat, my brother the other. They never saw him again. If they'd had stayed in Franco Spain, my dad would have been shot. He wouldn't stay to fight brother against brother. So we came to London. On the boat, someone told him about a Spanish restaurant in Piccadilly. He got a job there. Mum stayed at home. She never spoke English. The family would keep Mum and Nan locked up in a room. The men were very jealous. But Mum was in charge in that room. She brought us up. War started. They wanted Mum to send us children to Ireland. She said, no, where my children go, I go too. Mum was very stern. You didn't cross her. <laughs> Nan led a wicked life. He used to make us laugh. These are the women who fight for their own. These are the women who didn't stay in line, like me, Spanish ladies. They looked like slaves, but they called the shots. Stand up for yourself. I didn't stay at home. Life was hell for me. I did my fair share of crying. But then I buckled up, got out, did my own thing, free jobs. I was in opposition to them, to mum, to nan. But I learnt their cooking. And I learnt their loving. How do I know that my youth is all spent? Well, my get up and go has got up and went. But I really don't mind when I think with a grin of all the grand places my get up has been. What gift would I like to pass on? Be yourself. Plough your own furrow so that you and your family are safe. Know that there are good and bad times. Face the world no matter what the world throws at you. Resourcefulness. Determination. We learned this from our mothers and our aunts. To fight like a girl, you need support. Be enterprising. Be gutsy. Girl power, ambition, drive. You can do it. You can do anything. Be who you want to be. But help each other out. And remember, don't look down. Don't look back. Eyes right ahead and keep straight on. Learn to take off. Learn to land. Learn to fly. How to live, how to live, be yourself, be yourself. plow your own furrow, your stand own up for what you believe in, choose your own way, choose your own way, choose your own way. Ignore the instructions, be enterprising, be conceived. Choose, choose your own way, choose your own way, choose your own way, choose your own way. How to live, learn to land, learn to take off. Learn to fly, fly to the moon, choose your own way.